Jairus of all, Iron Man Rocket Launcher Build, Problems Edition. My dog Riddick was bored, so I figured I'd bring him out here and put him in this video in the garage so that he can help me explain what all was wrong with this thing while I tried to build it. Instead of just going over the electrical issues that I had, I figured it'd be good to mention everything that went wrong with this because I would be leaving out a lot if I just did that. We're gonna start out with shaping the Kydex. And this is the main problem with it. When you heat Kydex up, it likes to stretch, but it's difficult to get it to compress. So I had to get the curves and then roll it against a surface to get it to compress in a certain area so that it didn't bind because it wanted to bind together and cause little folds, which looked terrible, so I couldn't do that. That took a long time to figure out, but I eventually got it to work. If you ever work with Kydex, you'll find that also. It's made to be stretched over something, not compressed. That leads me to the next problem. Trying to get perfect seams between all of these was very difficult because these three pieces up here could not come from this piece and they couldn't all be one piece that split. This was the only split that I made, so every other seam on this had to be hand fit. So you saw me make them in the video. What you didn't see was the three or four days that it took to shape these because after they were basically shaped, I had to sit there and sand and dremel and make sure that they fit together perfectly so that it didn't look like two pieces of plastic stuck together. A lot of sanding. The next problem with shaping the Kydex was that all of these pieces had to fit together and leave enough space for all the stuff that goes inside. And the piece that went on my arm couldn't be my whole arm because then it would twist with these bones in my wrist and it would cause all sorts of problems with that. It's all super tight in there. That's what she said. <laughs> so I had to make enough room inside that wasn't locked onto my arm that I could fit all the extra pieces and make everything removable still, but still have everything fit. And I had to do that without knowing how much space I had because I couldn't mount the stuff inside until the things on the outside were permanently mounted because a lot of stuff is mounted to those. So that took a long time also. It was really difficult to get this launcher section to close consistently so that the top was down and the sides came in and it held tight together on the sides. To get this to close consistently and lock together, I ended up adding very small neodymium magnets to the inside sections to make it all lock up and come together tightly. Stupid, itty bitty, tiny little magnets stuck to everything, metal shavings. It didn't help that much. I just want it to close. Another problem that I had was this cold piece needed to be clearanced on the back because I made it, but I forgot that the drop-down arms on the side here, those drop down into the section where the gold plate is and it would hit and it couldn't let the top come back and then it wouldn't let the arms lift up. So it didn't work at all. Why won't it just open? So I had to clearance those and their mount locations to be able to make that work. So anyway, after I got that done, I realized that I could add more magnets to make this come together correctly but if I added more magnets, the servos might not have the power to pull it apart. I think that's a catch-22. I think that's... I don't know. What do you think? Is that right, Riddick? Yeah, I don't know either. I didn't realize what was going on that was causing the problem, but the problem was that my battery had died. And I didn't think that it would die, but I had switched to a different battery that hadn't been charged for a long time, and it wasn't allowing it to work it was causing it to not move at the same speed that it normally would because there's so much tension on the servos that lift the rocket launcher part up versus the side panel. Should have known it was the battery. So I started trying to fix that not knowing that the battery was dead. So I added guides on the front of this to make sure that these would come together but they wouldn't tuck underneath the top panel. They look simple, they took forever. After I added those, it got to the point where this wouldn't open at all, so I started trying to figure out a way to aid the front servos in making it open. But then I thought, maybe I cooked the motors inside them from them pulling so hard against this mechanism, and they're just dead, and I'm going to have to replace them. So I started thinking about what I could do to help them out if they were dead, so that I wouldn't have to remove everything to get back in there to put new servos in. So I added rubber band guides to the front, inside to pull on the servo arms to try to get them to help open the whole mechanism because it wouldn't work. Rubber bands for the win! Not really. After I added those bands, it wouldn't close the whole way. So then I removed the bands and I started thinking long and hard about whether I should rip this whole thing apart 
to be able to replace the servos because the whole front panel would have to come off and it's epoxy the whole way around. It was about to be a nightmare. Then I had a eureka moment and I thought, oh man, what if the battery's dead? After I spent all that time trying to make sure that this thing came up correctly, I thought my servos were dying that lift the launcher mechanism. And then I was like, oh, maybe the battery that I'm using is dead. So I checked it and it was. And it works no problem now. Check your stuff. So I checked the voltage on the cell that I was using from the brick battery that I had. And I realized that the voltage was super low and I charged it back up. And then while I was charging that back up, I realized to eliminate more problems, I should probably figure out how to get the batteries that are going to be in this, in this, just in case they operate differently off of that. So then I mounted the batteries inside, but initially I was going to have two plugs, one for each system. And I realized how difficult it would be to get everything plugged in while you're trying to put your arm inside and get the glove on and get the controls plugged in from that and get the batteries plugged in from this. So I set this up on a four wire plug that plugs in all at once to make this thing work. I'm really proud of this little plug that I made. Also one special note about these batteries. When I got them, they were labeled which one was positive, which one was negative. Usually positive has a red wire, negative has a black wire. These were opposite. That took a long time to figure out too, because I thought maybe I didn't have the voltage to make it run. Thanks China, good batteries. Then I could run that battery to make everything operate and I eliminated one possibility of this being wrong after that. After I installed that plug system, everything was the way it would be when you would fire it. So now I knew nothing would change, but nothing was still closing the whole way. In fact, at this point, after I'd added the magnets, the front sides wouldn't come together. They were leaving about a centimeter of space between them and the top wouldn't go down. And I had no idea why, because nothing had changed and it used to all close completely before. The only things that were different were that I had added the neodymium magnets that attached the bottom to the top and I had permanently wired everything inside. So I didn't know if it was resistance or magnetic interference, but nothing was going the way that it did before. The side panels were trying to open further, it seemed like, and the launcher system wouldn't go the whole way down, but it also seemed like it didn't want to go the whole way up, but I couldn't really tell. And I had removed the rubber bands because I had put the new battery on, so I wanted to see how it operated with the battery without the rubber bands, because after I put the rubber bands on, it didn't want to close the whole way because there was so much tension on it when the rubber bands were stretched. It's turning into a problem, isn't it? It's all right, I figure it out eventually. So I thought, hmm, maybe the magnets have something to do with it. Or maybe resistance has something to do with it. So I added six sets of magnets to hold the lower section on. I removed two of those sets to take the magnetic fields away from where the servo controllers and the servos were at in the back section. You have no idea how difficult it is to grind through JB Weld and try to get a way to break it off when it's been doubled epoxy, double epoxied in place? No, but doubled. I can't talk. Double epoxy layers off of Kydex. I roughed it up and it was double epoxied. I had to grind holes and crack it in half and then break it off and then sand the rest out because the magnetic field was transferring through the stick weld because it actually has steel in it. It's magnetic. And then after I took those off, I thought the resistance is probably going to be an issue. So I resoldered some connections, rerouted some wires, tried to make them shorter and I still had the same problem, almost exactly. So I started trying to adjust the adjustments on the front two servos that operate the launcher system instead of the side closure. But the side closure, I didn't know how I'd adjust that. And at that point, I realized that if you have your glove in here, you might hold that limit switch on by accident because something gets caught on it in there when you're shooting the rocket. And if that's on and then you bump the rocket launch button, it could go off when you don't want it to. I didn't want to find out what it feels like to get melted Kydex all over my arm. So I added a little bit of redundancy and I put a master kill switch on the rocket launch setup. And then I decided to move back on to the main problem at hand and get this to close. 
there were four different things that I could think of to fix the movement on the launcher mechanism. The first one was to just go ahead and remove everything and remount the servos so that they would close everything back to the right position. But I knew that was going to be really difficult. So I decided that I'd wait on that idea. The second idea that I had was just trying to bend the arms and adjust them so that they could push everything to the right place because I physically bent the arm and put it to a new location. This aluminum's already been bent and shaped. I felt if I clipped it and tried to bend it again, it was probably gonna snap. I was probably right. I'm glad I didn't find out. But I knew that that might compromise the integrity of the aluminum on the side panels, and I wasn't sure how much adjustment I had in the front arms to be able to make that work. Unfortunately, to adjust the front arms, I cut all of the adjustment thread off so that it would clear the movement arms. That's also why they're bent at that angle. Then I decided that I could also talk to an engineer, and if I talk to the engineer, which I talked to two engineers actually, and figure out what's going on with the electrical system that they're getting different signals than they were before, maybe I could fix it without having to mess with anything or take anything apart. So I talked to them and they said there's too many variables without running a bunch of tests with them here, it would be difficult and neither of them were here. So after talking about that, I realized that there was a fourth option. I could just pull the control arms off of the servos, move them one spline over so that they were actuating closer in and force everything to shut. But the issue with that was there was a lot of things in place that were permanent that I had to take off to be able to get to those screws to pull the control arms off to set them in new locations on the servo splines. I know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Why won't it just close? I realized that the easiest one was probably just to pull things out of it and drill holes and dremel stuff out of the way and get a long skinny screwdriver to take those screws out to reposition the servo arms on the sides and do the same thing for the ones on the top. That took a lot of time. After I took it all apart and I reset the control arms to the next spline position on the servos, everything shut the way it was supposed to. But then my switches, when they were pressed, it caused jitter in the servos, so it would close, and then it would jitter back open a tiny bit. I don't know why the servos have to jitter at the end if it would just shut and stay shut and open the whole way and stay open, it would be wonderful. But no, that wouldn't happen. But if I held my fingers on the sides very lightly, it kept it shut. I was like, well, maybe if I put more magnets on now, it'll actually hold it together. But then I still would run into the problem of whether it would be able to pull the magnets apart or not. But I figured it was worth a shot. So I added a bunch of little tiny neodymium magnets that went face to face with lots of attraction to be able to get this thing to close and stay closed. They look simple, they took forever. And after I put them on, in very strategic locations, everything shut and stayed shut, even if the servos jittered after I let off of the button. And I don't know why that happened. I don't know why any of this happened, but you can feel free to let me know in the comments. I don't know why I was so worried about those extra magnets. The servos were more than powerful enough to handle it. After I added the additional magnets, this thing opened and closed exactly like it was supposed to pretty much every time, if there's no rocket inside. If I put a rocket inside there, it's got about an 80% success rate. And it goes up a little bit if I oil all of the pivot points, and it goes down a little bit if I haven't oiled them for a while. And I've been trying to oil it with motor oil and air tool oil, but nothing stays on the surfaces well enough for it to stay lubricated. So whenever I go to use it, I have to lubricate it within a few hours of when I'm gonna use it so that it'll be consistent. I can ru add rubber bands to the front of it to help the servo motors out so that it opens and closes every time, but that also makes it difficult for it to close the whole way because there's a lot of tension when it gets to the bottom, and right here at the bottom, that's when the lid closes. So if there's just a little bit of tension, it makes the lid not be shut enough for those to close around it. So I think I need to figure out some way to get grease in those pivot points so that that works. But now it's, it works. It does. It's exciting, isn't it? I know.
And those are all of the major problems that made this build take weeks instead of days. So now you know. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, and stay tuned for my next project coming up soon. I'm still trying to get parts together for it, and in the meantime, I'm going to put out a special edition video on how you can build anything, and then I'm going to get into the next project once I have the parts to be able to build it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Back from the dead.